Evolutionists tell us that we used to be fish, then one day we decided to walk out of the water. But wait, don't we have to have legs to do that? What if we have to breathe? Didn't we need lungs? To support this charade, they bring out this series of creatures that they just decided to arrange in the order they see fit and call it evidence for a transition. This is what they put in the textbooks, and this is exactly what was disproven when footprints were found in Poland that predate even our finned ancestors. What's it gonna take for these supposed scientists to give up the fairy tale of evolution. I had to investigate. In 2009, Gregor Znidzwitski made a discovery in early Middle Devonian strata in the Holy Cross Mountains of Poland, a series of tracks in the stratum that was 395 million years old. The trackways clearly show that the animal who made them was able to walk without dragging themselves on the ground. The trouble with this set of tracks is that they predate the oldest known fossils of land-walking animals by at least 20 million years, and even their oldest lobe fin predecessors by 10 million years. This meant that the history of land-dwelling animals needed to be rethought. In the latter half of the 19th century, biologists had noticed something interesting about land-dwelling vertebrate animals. All of them have features in common, such as nostrils, heads that are skeletally separate from the torso, spines with interlocking vertebrae, pelvises, rib cages, and four limbs comprised of one bone, followed by two bones, and ending in no more than five digits. These characters are unique to the cladistic superclass of animals called tetrapods. Assuming common descent, the prediction was that somewhere in the strata there would be a common ancestor which shared all of these traits. At the time, it had also been observed that at and below Devonian strata we see no land-dwelling tetrapods, but directly above it we see a radiation of them with stunning variety. So the logical prediction would be that this ancestor, or a very close relative of it, would be found somewhere in Devonian strata. The Devonian is a geological period ranging from 419 million years ago to 359 million years ago. At the time, there had been no land-dwelling plants discovered in this 60 million year period, so the working assumption was that plants had not yet conquered land, as it was a period of excessive heat and dryness. Using nature today as a model for the past, the scenario of this migration from water to land was something akin to modern-day mudskippers, who use their fins to walk from puddle to puddle when their ponds dry up. The trouble with Devonian strata is that we don't have a lot of outcroppings of it. Consequently, there are also very few fossils known from it. The most likely candidates for a body type of the ancestors of tetrapods are lobe-finned fish, which have bony appendages that resemble tetrapod arms but no digits. Joseph Frederick Whiteve's 1881 description of the lobe-finned Eustinopteron in 385 million year strata showed that there definitely were lobe-finned fishes at the time, but it wasn't until 1932 when a preliminary description of the definitively tetrapoid Ichthyostega by Gunnar Steve Soderberg demonstrated a transitional in 365 million year strata. Also in on the discovery was Eric Jarvik, who spent the next 60 years meticulously cleaning, measuring, and fully describing the find. In the interim, he published this reconstruction along with an occasional paper. The trouble was that these two species had far too many differences between them to truly call it a transitional sequence. The Devonian strata continued to offer very little other than a few fragmentary fossils of Ichthyostega until 1980. 87 when Jenny Clack and her assistant, Para Alberg, discovered Acanthostega in 365 million year old strata. Details of the back legs were rather sketchy, but the front legs provided a gigantic surprise in that they actually included eight digits completely defying scientists' predictions. What was also notable was the shape of the shoulder and limbs prevented the animal from rotating its limbs downward. In other words, it could not have held itself up to walk. After Eric Jarvik died, Clack's team re-examined Ichthyostega. They discovered seven digits on each limb, but more importantly, that it too could not have rotated its limbs downward for walking. This offered a mystery. It had been assumed from the model based on organisms like the mudskipper that tetrapod limbs had developed after they had ventured onto land. If they weren't for walking, what were they for? With the discovery of plants resembling tree ferns and entire forests, the answer became clear. Early digits developed for the same reason salamanders use them today when underwater. Whether hunting or fleeing, digits are useful for navigating through lush underwater vegetation. All of this, and there was still no known intermediate between tetrapods and their fish-like ancestors. In 2000, Pierre Alberg described a jawbone he'd discovered in 374 million year old strata from Estonia. Measuring derived traits such as pinhole structures called foramen and the dentition, the conclusion was clear that it was something between pendrichthys and tetrapods, but it was only a job. 
Jawbone. As mentioned in episode 37, a true intermediate would eventually be found in 2006 when Edward B. Deschler of the Academy of Natural Sciences, Neil H. Shubin from the University of Chicago, and Harvard University professor Farish A. Jenkins Jr. chose the Devonian strata on Ellesmere Island, Nunavut in northern Canada to search for an animal which appeared to have wrist bones similar to tetrapods and yet rays similar to ray finned fishes, with spiracles in the head which would be indicative of a lung system in addition to a pectoral girdle separating the head from the body with a neck. After five years of excavation, they found three individuals matching those exact traits. These individuals were named Tiktaalik. With all of these fossil species, there was finally a reasonably complete sequence of transitions, especially when including incomplete species such as Elpistostege at 378 million years ago, Elgonerpeton and Elbrucovictes at 374 million years ago, Telerpeton, Hynerpeton, Densignathus, Jacobsonia, Metaxignathus, Synostega, and Ventastega at 365 million years ago, as well as trackways discovered in the Genoa River and Glen Isla in Australia, Tarbet Nass in Scotland, and Valencia Island in Ireland. It became clear that not only do we see a transition, but radiation of multiple species. A radiation that accelerated with the extreme variety that we see in the Carboniferous. In 2009, when Gregor Znidzwitski discovered 395 million year old tracks at the Zakhelmy Quarry in Poland, his immediate action was to refer them to Per Alberg. Using conodont shells, the team's preliminary dating of the tracks contradicted a century and a half of evidence as they even predated Eustenopteron. In 2013, the genome of lungfish was mapped and compared with several tetrapod genomes. This comparison confirmed that lungfish, a type of lobe-finned fish, was the closest relative to tetrapods. In 2014, Emily Standin from the University of Ottawa presented her findings on experiments on walking with a species of lungfish called a Bashir. In one specific experiment, she isolated a population and raised them in a damp but terrestrial environment. Unable to swim, these individuals were forced to adapt to a life out of water. After reaching adulthood, the Bashirs were observed under high-speed photography and compared with individuals who had been raised in an aquatic environment. While Bashirs that were raised in water had difficulty walking, the experimental group showed a new adaptation to locomotion. Although still having fins, this group was able to raise its head and body to make individual steps. More than that, their bones had actually been modified for more efficient walking. While this would seem to offer an explanation for the trackways found in Poland, there were a few small details. First, the tracks showed no indication of a body being dragged along the ground, which the Bashirs did show. But more importantly, the trackways actually demonstrated individual digits, seven of them to be precise. So there is no doubt the individual that made them was in fact a tetrapod, and it predated our oldest specimens of potential ancestors. This conflicting evidence has some vast implications. Either terrestrial movement evolved twice in vertebrates, which is unlikely, or it evolved earlier in the Devonian than previously thought. As is often repeated, the fossil record is notoriously spotty. Fossilization is a rare occurrence, and Devonian strata is rarely accessible. The fact that we have any fossils to go on is just short of miraculous, and we can't say for sure what ranges of time any of these species occupied. What we can say for sure is that our current model has made predictions that have been confirmed. We have found fossils of animals demonstrating transitional features between tetrapods and their aquatic ancestors, and they were found in the Devonian strata they were predicted to be in. The answer to this mystery, whatever it may be, will be discovered by examining Devonian deposits and revising our model on the origin of tetrapods to match what we find and to predict future finds. A continuing example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.